Recently, I acquired a second-hand collection of LEGO Pirates, almost all of the first sets from the 1989 wave, including Lagoon Lockup, Eldorado Fortress, The Clipper, and more. In today's video, I'm going to show you the process that I took to fully restore the largest set from this collection, the Eldorado Fortress. Unlike the other sets in this collection, the fortress was sold to me built, and it was covered in a thick layer of dust. The bricks are also badly sun damaged in some areas, and some sections are built wrong, such as the top part having the wrong panel piece. I will try to take everything apart and replace sun damaged parts as best as I can, but that will start with fully dismantling this and getting all the parts washed and cleaned. Unlike the rest of the parts for the set, the raised base plate as well as the instruction manual had to be cleaned by hand, with a sanitary wipe across all the surfaces as well as the bottom, and dusting in between all the studs on the base plate. The instruction manual as well as the back of the box was not in great shape, but it's useful for when I'm trying to part the set back together. The minifigs for this set were mixed together with all of the other minifigs that came with these pirate sets, so I was able to choose just the best soldiers, Redbeard, and pirates for this set. That also included getting all the original accessories and counting them according to Bricklink or Brick Owl's inventory base, making sure that they were the old brown and old grey, Almost all the parts I needed for this were already in the lot, which meant that the original owner took very good care of them. Putting aside the accessories, we'll focus on just the minifigs themselves. All the yellowed white legs could be replaced with modern counterparts, but a lot of the torsos and minifig faces that couldn't be replaced had to be kept and cleaned up as best as I could. Reassembling them, you can see the difference that just a light clean and reorganizing of all the parts can make, with all eight minifigs for the Eldorado Fortress looking incredible just as they did from 1989. With the minifigures, accessories, and base plate done, it's time to look at the main chunk of the build, which is all of the bricks that were yellowed and dusty. I'm going to be washing all of the parts that came with this together, since a lot of these sets' parts are interchangeable. Delicate or very small parts have already been removed, which includes all the minifig parts, plumes, coins. These I just don't want to get lost in the whole process of cleaning them. All the other parts should be fine, and the light layer of dust on the top should be able to be removed quite easily. Some parts to look out for are these boats, as well as the leaves and branches, where dust can get really far into the piece and it makes it hard to clean by hand. Therefore, washing all of these parts together will help them all be cleaned quite evenly and letting them soak for a while so that you can really get out that 30 year old dust. Moving to the sink we can start washing all of these bulk pieces in large tubs together. Regular dishwashing liquid is fine for washing these, just the same that you'd use to wash plates or dishes. Lego bricks are pretty durable and as long as you don't bleach them they should be fine. Regular non-bleach soap with warm water is fine for most Lego pieces. Just be sure to remove stickered pieces, fabrics obviously, whenever they come up. But for this lot, it'll be fine to wash everything in this way. After submerging all the parts in water and giving them a good push all the way around the water, you can see that it starts to lather up pretty quick. And at this point, you can just let them sit for about an hour or two hours, uh, coming by occasionally to just keep stirring them. With all the pieces fully submerged and everything already starting to look a lot cleaner. Salad spinners are great for cleaning Lego at this scale. You can use the colander part of it to rinse out the pieces and then fully assemble it to start the drying process. For now I'm just going to tip all the water out of these and make sure that all of the soap is rinsed off. You can see just how much water is still in the bricks after rinsing out all the pieces and drying them. Looking at the main lot of pieces now that they've all been rinsed, you can see that there's still water on them, and some of the pieces may not be entirely clean, so they may need to be put in again. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this, and most of the pieces can start the main drying process. Now all the pieces have been in the salad spinner a few times, and you can see how some of the big plates still have some dust on them. These I'm need to put aside separately and wash with a sponge by hand. There's no other way to clean these, and it's the only way they'll get back to looking really clean. I'm also going to start to sort all the pieces while they're drying, just so that as soon as they're finished drying I can start putting them back into the sets that they go into. You can see after cleaning all the plates that they've turned out a lot better, and these can also join all the other pieces that are drying now. 
Sorting it now is the first time I've been able to see what's really there. It seems there's very few pieces actually missing. Everything's in really good condition. It was just a bit dirty. You can see after color sorting it that the yellow, white, and gray pieces have significant discoloring on them. I can try hydrogen peroxide for them, but it tends to leave pieces a lot more brittle. It doesn't always work too well. It's definitely worth a shot if you're interested in it, but I'm just going to replace as much of the white as I can to get the set looking good as new. All the arches, as well as most of the yellow and white, were able to be switched for other pieces, but some of them will just be a little bit yellow in the final built version. It's time now to leave everything to dry overnight to make sure that there is no water left in the pieces when I go to start building everything. Coming back the next morning, you can see how shiny and clean all the pieces look. Everything's turned out really well, and it's going to be great to see the sets come together. I'm starting by potting out the Eldorado Fortress, Clipper, and Forbidden Island, just because I like to prioritize the best condition and widest parts to use for these three main sets. I usually use Brick Owl, Brick Link, or Toys Period to do the inventory for sets to make sure all the parts are there and period correct before I start building. This is also good for when I'm putting stuff up for sale on Bricklink because a lot of collectors will prefer to have things that are correct to the actual set and year that it came out in. Every single part that I needed to finish this was already in there, which is pretty rare for secondhand sets. I had to swap out a lot of the parts with my own anyway because they were yellowed. The other sets also cleaned up very well, the Clipper as well as Forbidden Island. I might do videos on these in the future, but for now, I'll turn my attention to all the sets that are left. Lagoon Lockup, Broadsides Brig, Castaways Raft, all these classic sets are also in this lot. But with all the parts sorted and everything clean and ready to go, it's time to finally build the El Dorado Fortress. And here it is, the El Dorado Fortress. This really is a massive improvement from where I found it. All the doors, accessories, flags look incredible, all fixed up. And although not all the white was able to be fixed, I'll slowly place it over time as I can find those parts. This really is an iconic set, and a lot of those iconic shaping panels and prints on it have held up really well over the years because the set was in such good condition despite yellowing and dust. I hope you enjoyed watching me fix up this set. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, just let me know. Thanks for watching.